जाना Welcome to the Wicked Gamer and Collector. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, it's time for a new portable system from our friends from China. So for the people who are new to the channel, a uh, little bit of explain, little explaining uh, what this is. We're having ad games. I did a lot of reviews about these ad game portable systems. Um, it seems to be that ad games, I'm guessing they are stopped making these systems, but our friends from China, they are still making this portable video game player, or just a rip off of the ad game. So we're going to do an unboxing. Uh, it seems to be this is the new version, and yes, it's really a new version. They did a lot of improvements. So... Oh, hey guys, you're back. So, let's see what we're going to get. It comes with this um, instruction manual. All right, let's take a close look at it. Yeah, what the heck? Game player appearing and key. Um, is this a new manual? No, it's just a basic manual. They deliver with all of these systems. It comes with an AV out cable, so we can plug it into television. It's mono sound, and it's one for the video. So this is a really old composite cable. Um, sorry guys, but I don't care. Right, what do we have here? We have in here the USB. It's an old USB cable connection. Hmm. Let's see. Ooh, I ordered a blue one because blue is my favorite color. So let's do a little bit of an overview. Uh, what are we going to get with the system? And what are, well, that's just new because to be honest, if you have seen my previous videos, it's all the same. It weighs the same. It smells the same, so let's do an overview. So at the bottom we're finding the headphone jack and at the right we're finding the on and off switch. So the D-pad, it's, I don't know what to, what to think of it. It feels very nice, not a very long travel. So that's the question, hmm, how does it play? Here at the top we're having the menu button for calling the extra menu. Here at the right side we're finding the start and pause button. And here we have the six pad. I think it's got a very nice touch to it. But big buttons and small buttons. Hmm, I don't know. Like all the previous models, we're having volume control, CF card, but here we have something new. This one got an a HDMI out. Ooh. But that is interesting. And we're having the old analog AV out and USB for charging. Here at the back we are finding the battery cover. So let's take a close look what is beneath it, because I really want to know what kind of battery they are using. Alright, this is the battery that comes with this system. It's a 1000 milliamp, and I must say it's a model that I don't see very often in other clone systems. Alright, let's power it on. Alright, Louis. No app games? No? Alright, they just ripped off the system itself. Have this clickish with the previous models, so it seems to be there are a lot of games on it. All right, some knuckles. So, man, there are a lot of games on this thing. What other games? All right, that is pretty nice. I'm guessing when pressing the menu button, I can here find some more information. Also for the TV out. Advanced options, information, format card, or can even format the card. Information. Mm -hmm. Alright. So I can see we're pressing start. Alright, that's asking for the SD card. Alright, let's play some games. I'm pretty curious how it's running. As you can see already the 
Uh, the, the view angle is pretty damn horrible with this thing. Not very nice. Right. Try to keep it this way. Of course I'm pressing... And... Ow. Of course I'm going to get kicked in the back. I must say, I have seen and hear worse, so it's not bad at all. A uh, little fun fact, if you're pressing the menu button, what you can see here, you can always load and save your game. And even going into the settings menu and adjusting to original size, scale and full screen. Sonic 3. It runs like shit. Oh my god, that sound! Oh man! The sound is really off. Frame rate is pretty damn horrible. So, when playing these games, I'm noticing that the first generation of games like Shinobi, or let's say Sonic, Sonic 1, are running decent. Not bad at all. All right, let's try it again. These are playable. Sound is not bad. So, it's... Oh man. Let's try this one. That sounds weird. The D-pad the is not bad at all. Alright. Welcome back. And in this part of the video, we are going to test out the AV out function through HDMI because I think that is pretty damn awesome that it has. Uh, this is what you're going to get. We have a black screen, no signal here, so it's pushing the signal out through the HDMI port. Um, as you can see on the screen, uh, we don't have an extra SD function, but you can see that SD HC is yeah, the little icon is at the left bottom corner. So this means we're having an HD function now. When pressing the right or start button here we're going to into the sd folder and i just already made some folders there's not nothing in it but you're getting the idea so you're making your own folders all right let's play some game boy advance let's see how this is running i uh, make my console to frankenstein now i needed it needed some juice oh man oh, i hate putting in the name function all right skip 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 all right, let's go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. Let's go. Ah, here it is. I must say the D-pad is not bad at all. It's not bad at all. So there is something pretty damn weird. I cannot boot Game Boy games. So the classic Game Boy games don't work on this device. But the Game Boy Color, they work. So I don't know if you think of this, but I think it is pretty damn weird. Why can't I play original Game Boy games, but I can't play the, Ar the, the Game Boy Color versions? So, 
This is something that I need to point out. As you can see, MAME runs on this device. So there's a MAME, a MAME emulator. So that is pretty damn awesome. But you can't enter a credit. We have six buttons here, and none of them are mapped. So I contact the seller. I told him that I have MAME running, but I can't enter a credit. Is there a way of remapping the buttons? And he told me, yeah, but we're not advertising with MAME. Or in other words, you can boot up arcade games, but it's not supported. I am confused now. I am pretty damn confused and disappointed. All right, let's play a little bit of Mega Man. I must say two dimensional games, sometimes they're working good. They're not perfect, but they are playable most of the times. So this is what we're going to get with this system. Let's try it in a three dimensional game. And let's see how this one is running. As you can already see with the menu of the character select menu, is it's running very poor. But you can see it's pretty damn unplayable. It's just unplayable. Let's test out some Super Famicom. I'm just going to say it, it runs like shit if you compare it with other portable systems. And I mean, of course, the Chinese portable systems. It gotten very up and down if it comes to the frame rate. Sometimes it's going freaking turbo mode or something. It's just going ape shit. Yeah, let's put it that way. And overall, this is what we're going to get. Uh, this stage seems to be pa yeah, just playable. Uh, but then overall, it's running pretty damn poor. So if you want to play some FX games, <laughs> don't even bother trying it. All right, but... Um, being in the arcade menu, I was thinking, all right, this is a really, very annoying problem. I'm missing out a button. That's the main problem with this portable system. So I was thinking, if I'm going to the setting menu, going to the keyboard mapping, maybe it's possible, because I'm missing out a button, to map two functions to one button. In other words, all right, it's very weird. You need to choose right, so pressing right, and then it goes to the start. Pressing start. Now we're going to push the start button. But for the same, I'm going to do for the same for the select. So what it's going to do now, it's very simple. When pressing the start button, it is pressing player one. But at the same time, it's giving a credit. All right. Let's give this thing a coin. And as you can see, it boots up. So we can play arcade games after all. So that is pretty damn awesome. So let's test out your arcade games. I must say the D-pad itself, as you can see here, is not very responsive for games like this. I can do moves. I can do moves, but it's not the best D-pad I have seen. The game is not running perfectly. It's not like it should be, but it's playable. So yes, people, if you do this small modification in the setting menu of the bottom mapping, you can just play arcade games. I think it's pretty damn awesome, but keep in mind, you need to, so far I have noticed, you need to remap every time this button if you're starting a new game. So that's a little bit of a bummer. See, I cannot do the, what the hell? This horror. You Honda, just shut up with your annoying move. So for the final conclusion about the portable video game player, don't get confused with the box. It's just, I think, an old stock of boxes they are using. Indeed, it's new version. It has HDMI output. It supports a lot of new systems. The bummer is, Mega Drive runs like shit. A lot of old games are playable, but the newer games, like let's say your newer games, like later games they released for the Mega Drive, like Sonic 3, is running again, like the previous model, like crap. But the Super Famicom, same, it's like in, in this, this horrible emulator they're using, but some things like Game Boy Advance are running fine. PlayStation, yeah, 2D games, like a lot of these shiny knockoff systems, it runs or it's playable, but three-dimensional games are running very horrible. So this is what we're going to get. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell. And if you're into gaming, check out the gaming channel.
again, thanks for watching. See you next time.